Point to the video, guys. Um, compression testing. If you think you have a subject car and there may be an issue with compression that you're trying to run down, troubleshooting, maybe maybe it won't start or whatever, and you have your suspicions, um, yeah, you can always resort to checking the basic mechanicals, of course, with a compression gauge, right? And these are obviously great. You know, they're a trade stalwart, you know, in the toolbox. You just go to it and set up your uh, thread into your uh, spark plug holes when you remove the spark plugs and you can easily do a compression test, right? Easily on this car. If you're dealing with some of the other cars or perhaps V6s or, you know, V8s that are a modern car that has got a very crowded engine compartment, uh, perhaps that's easier said than done actually accessing the spark plugs. So like most of the videos I do, guys, I try to be practical is there any point to resorting to this, potentially getting yourself in a, you know, disconnecting engine mounts and the like, you know, like, so you can tilt the engine and access spark plug holes if you don't really have to, right? A much more sensible, at least initial approach, don't get me wrong, this has its place. As I said, this is the one that's going to tell you definitively if you have an issue. And it makes perfect sense to resort to this when you have to but does it make sense to resort to this if there isn't actually an issue you just have your suspicions no really if you just have your suspicions perhaps it makes sense to just do a relative compression test guys right twenty dollar oscilloscope and you can do a relative compression test and most of the relative compression tests you may have seen or perhaps you've seen other videos on youtube or whatever perhaps it's been one of mine um Typically, you'll see an amp clamp, right? Now, this is just a low amp clamp. You'll see a lot of guys will tell you you need a high amp clamp. You, you don't really need a high amp clamp. It's maybe preferable in certain instances, but for the most part, a low amp clamp will do. But the reality is you don't even need that, right? You can just simply use the voltage drop of the battery and just um, with a very basic oscilloscope, you can do a pretty accurate relative compression test. Now, what's the difference between a relative compression test and a compression test? Well, this is giving you a definitive number for each cylinder, guys. This will only give you a comparison waveform where you can compare, compare each cylinder to one another. Typically, this is good enough. So just a quick explanatory note here, guys. When we are looking at the trace, especially the trace where there is a compression issue, uh, realize that we don't know which cylinder is actually the issue. Why don't we know? The DSO-152 is only a single channel oscilloscope. You would need a minimum of, of two channels in order to add a synchronization uh, trace. A synchronization trace gives you the ability to identify cylinder number one, and then you can plug in the firing order, figure out um, which cylinder is the issue, based on the firing order and where the anomaly actually occurs on the trace. We cannot do that with a single trace oscilloscope. So from my point of view, it makes a lot more sense just to do a relative compression test if you only have a suspicion. Okay. So you do whatever you need to do to keep your car from starting, guys, because all you want to do is rotate the engine on the starter, okay? So in my instance, you can see there, I've just pulled out the fuel pump crank the engine over to purge the residual fuel in the line so all i'm getting is a crank now right which leads me to an initial point when you're checking the compression of an engine first thing you want to do is listen to the cadence of the engine that is to say listen to the rhythm of the engine as it as it spins over because if you have a uniform cadence a uniform rhythm to the engine cranking over in all likelihood the cylinders are all balanced if there's a definite drop in the cadence then perhaps you have an issue with a single cylinder if you've got multiple cylinders having issues that's going to be a bit more difficult but typically you can hear in a healthy engine you can hear that normal cadence that normal beat to the rotation of the engine that's the first clue that you should be listening for for any signs of issue with the uh, relative compression in the engine okay so i've got the fuel pump really removed as i said all i've done is I've got the uh, the uh, basic leads that come with the uh, DS1 DSO 152. The basic of basics, the mini coax, the whole nine yards. Luckily for me, it spans the uh, battery terminals, and all we're going to do is check the voltage drop across the battery. 
right? So what I've got set up here, guys, is um, we'll see what the scaling is like here. But the main point is keep it in AC. If you keep the coupling in AC here, as opposed to DC coupling, what it's going to do is it'll strip the rest of the uh, the voltage waveform. All we're interested is in the variations at the very top of the waveform. You'll see what I mean momentarily here when we crank the engine. Use the run stop function in order to capture the image that I want. The, the trigger's not great on this little scope. Um, scaling, 50 millivolts uh, uh, per division. Now, of course, if we weren't in AC coupling here, 50 millivolts would clearly drive this uh, trace off screen, guys, right? We're only interested in the variations on the signal, the voltage trace here, not the actual absolute value, only the variations. So we can capture those and scale up again via the AC coupling, similar to what we did when I checked the, the fuel pump um, function. If you guys seen that video, I don't know, a week or two ago, whatever it was. So again, the AC coupling is critical, affords us this scaling. There's no attenuation and the time base is 10 milliseconds on my car. I've already sweeped a, a trace, a, a, damn, a sample trace to myself to get the, uh, the time base actually right. But that works for my car. So I'll get my boy to rotate the uh, the engine here. You'll hear it again, listen to the cadence of the engine rotation, and I'll use the uh, run stop uh, function here in order to capture the waveform, to freeze the waveform is what I mean by that. Okay, go ahead, Gip. <laughs> Good. Okay, so what do we actually have here, guys, right? As the engine rotates, the starter is engaged, and as the engine rotates, of course, initially, the starter has to overcome the uh, the inertia of and the compression, of course, of uh, the engine in order to get things rotating. There's going to be a massive current draw initially. That massive current draw is going to be reflected on the voltage of the battery. The more current you draw, the lower the voltage is going to go. Make sense? Right. So what we're looking at here, this is an inverted uh, waveform with respect to how much current the starter is drawing. The absolute numbers don't really matter, guys. We're, we're no checking. This is not a starter function um, or operational check. This is a compression test and a relative compression test. Can you imagine as the uh, crankshaft rotates, as uh, each cylinder goes towards the compression stroke, it's going to load the engine up or sorry, the starter with more compression. More compression is gonna to translate to a lower voltage, right? So a lower voltage at the battery, I mean, because the starter is being loaded. The more current the starter is drawing, the less voltage the battery is gonna actually show. So this would be um, top, near top dead center, for example. Top dead center, top dead center. The lower the voltage, the higher the load on the starter, the more current it would draw. Again, this is an inverted waveform. I don't have the ability to invert this. This is a very basic scope, guys. But if you want, simply turn the screen upside down and it's more reflective of the current draw on the starter. That's fine. What's important here? What's important is the balance of these compression humps, guys. Right? If one of these compression humps is flatlining, again, we're in AC uh, coupling here, if one of them was flatlining, then we could suspect that there's actually an issue with the car. So my car looks to be relatively healthy here. And again, how long did this take to do? Uh, I don't know. Take the fuel pump relay out, crank until you know you get a steady uh, crank without the car actually starting, trying to start. That's a cozy five minutes, yeah. As opposed to if I got the the old school uh, gauge out and was doing each plug individually it's going to take some time and again you might need to resort to this if i looked at this trace for example and one of the compression humps was abnormal now it makes good sense it's time to consider getting the compression gauge out no the work is justified that's the whole point guys is there any point in checking this yes every cylinder could be low on compression is it likely no it's not likely right but if we had one that was abnormally low, the hump looked skewed in some way, shape or form, and it started to steer us towards a compression issue, back that up with the fact that the cadence of the engine rotation would probably be abnormal. Now it's justified. Go and get yourself the, uh, the analog uh, gauge and go through the motions of pulling the plugs and actually checking the compression old school, right? Okay, so you see this and you think, yeah, right. Well, let's pull a plug. 
Let's intentionally disable the compression on one of the cylinders and take a look to see how it impacts the trace. Nothing wrong with skepticism. Uh, I'm a skeptic myself. We have a dead hole here. Can you see? Spark plug is removed. Spark plug. Right? Let's see what kind of impact it has on our trace here. So we're in run mode, so we'll capture uh, the waveform as we uh, rotate the engine. And um, not only look at the trace when it's uh, actually transpiring, but listen to the change in the cadence of the engine that I was mentioning. That should be your first tip off that perhaps there was uh, potentially an issue. Go ahead, Gip. Okay, so let's just stick, step away from the car here, guys, to just take a minute to understand what's actually going on in this trace, right? Because initially, it can be a wee, get, wee bit confusing to look at because it looks like three humps, right? But if you think about it, when you have a dead cylinder with respect to compression, um, things are going to speed up. They're not going to slow down. So the notion that this cylinder here is actually taking longer because there's a loss of compression it really makes no sense, right? If there's a, again, if there's a lack of compression in one of the cylinders, it's gonna actually speed up the timeline. But what's actually going on here is, again, just to be clear, guys, we're in AC coupling mode here. What we're looking at is the variations in the voltage on the battery, right? The battery uh, voltage drop, the variations in that voltage. Can you see here that what we're actually coming up on here is actually a normal compression uh, cycle. And what happens is, as we go into the next cylinder, because there is no, um, the next cylinder in the firing order, because there is no compression in that hole, what we have is really not much current draw. So there's no drop in the battery voltage up here. So it's actually staying artificially high, again, because of the lack of the current draw on the starter. And then we go into the next one, where there's normal compression, the voltage drops and then comes back up um, as it goes through. The, so this would be top dead center, top dead center, top dead center. We have a top dead center here, obviously, but we don't have the load on the starter. So it's not being reflected here, here, and I guess somewhere here-ish as well, just off, uh, off screen. So no quite what you would expect, perhaps. Um, this kind of looks like a very an alteration in the timeline. It's not, it's an alteration in the voltage, but again, because this one cylinder is being washed into the to the other with respect to the compression hump, it kind of looks like only three humps. So if you take the time to think about this, it kind of makes good sense. And again, things would speed up with respect to the, uh, the rotation of the engine if there's an issue with compression, because it would unload the starter. An unloaded starter is gonna rotate faster than when it's heavily loaded. I think that makes sense, guys. Okay, right, one other thing I wanted to point out here. Okay, so in the event your scope doesn't have an AC coupling mode, guys, I've spoken of this before, you can actually get a physical AC coupler, put it in line with a BNC, basically what it does is just block the DC that's coming through, and you will effectively have an AC coupled trace. It only looks at the variations, couldn't care less about the DC component in the signal. Right, I hope that made some sense, guys. Cheers.